Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here, and in today's GTA 5 video, I'm going to be telling you guys 15 things you need to know about the Albany VSTR sports car before you end up buying it in Grand Theft Auto Online. So this is a pretty cool vehicle. It kind of reminds me of some of the Grand Theft Auto 4 cars. It's available on the Legendary Motorsports site for $1,285,000. So it's not terribly expensive, certainly compared to some of the other vehicles we've seen in the game. And if the name of the car wasn't obvious itself, this is primarily based off of a Cadillac CTS-V with definitely some styling clues from a Mercedes, noticeably in the grill and in the headlights. And we've seen similar Albany style vehicles like this in previous titles like GTA 4 and more. So anyways, let's get this car into the Los Santos Custom Shop. And right off the bat, you'll notice that there are 23 options of customization. That is a ton, and it's something that Rockstar's done, again, a great job on with all the vehicles that they've added in this update. So the first unique thing that you can modify is the bumpers. There's custom splitters, carbon variants of each one, street splitters, aftermarket splitters. If you wanted to give it more of like a racer street vibe, that's certainly what you could go for here. It definitely makes it look way more aggressive. Uh, after that, it's exhaust options. I don't know what it is about some of these vehicles that Rockstar have added, but they always have like one or two categories that has like an abundance of options. And for this vehicle, it is the exhaust category. You've got 18 options there. Some exit on the skirt of the car instead of uh, exiting in the back where you would traditionally see the exhaust. So there's some crazy options here. Again, 18 options for exhaust. That seems like overkill a little bit, but at least you have plenty of choices. After that, there is a grill option if you want to remove the Albany badge from the grill. That's the only thing you can do. I guess if you're not a fan of the Albany badge, you can get rid of it. There's also a bunch of hood options too, 14 of them as well, from smooth to vented to scooped and performance. And there's also carbon variants of each one. And after you've chosen your hood options, you can choose to put some latches on there as well. There is a classic look and there is a modern look as well. So lots of different things that you can ultimately do to the hood of this vehicle. Now, once we've done that, it's time to move on to the liveries of this car. And we start with a couple of simple ones, and that is black stripes, which are two thick black stripes going across the top hood and roof of the car, and they go all the way down. So again, pretty simple design. We've seen this on cars in the past. To no one's surprise, white stripe is the exact same thing, except it's obviously in white. So you start out with some pretty simple ones. The next one is also pretty simple. It's two-tone. Now, two-tone looks like it makes the top third of the car sort of this like bronzy silver color. And the bottom half of the car is going to be whatever color you choose. So in my opinion, the color that I've got right now doesn't look all that great. It's like silver. But this could lead to some interesting options if you wanted to. So that is two-tone. After that, it is number five red pinstripe. And this almost kind of looks like a more modern Nike check mark that you can see there in like red and light pink with number five circled on the back side door. You can also see the words choke specialist, a couple of other sponsorships on the hood too. And again, to no one's surprise, number five blue pinstripe is the exact same thing, except it's in a bright blue color instead of in a bright red color. So there you go. Those are the two pinstripe liveries right there. The next one is Geo, and I can honestly say I'm not really a big fan of this one. It's kind of hard to explain what's going on here other than it's this like military-esque geometric pattern. And I'm not the biggest fan of it. Maybe you guys are, but it wasn't really the look that I was going for here. So that's Geo. The next one I actually really like. I just wasn't really going for this kind of look on the car. That is Atomic Drifter. So you've got this like super light blue on the back and it sort of fades to like the main color of the car uh, on the front. A ton of other sponsorships as well, like Chapal, Device, Ron, Mind Mock, Fix Up. Uh, you've also got 74 on the hood and on the side. So that is Atomic Drifter. Again, one of my favorites, just one I didn't end up using. The next one is Offset Camo, which literally makes like a third of the car on the driver's side 
have this interesting looking camo pattern with like these two cream stripes sort of near the license plate. It's interesting, that's for sure. I don't know why you would do like a third of the car that color and then the rest be nothing, but it is sort of an interesting design. After that, it is Albany Racer, which we're definitely getting into the more like race car vibes here. I can't really say I love this one. To me, it feels a little bit clunky. I like the colors and the logo, but it just feels like it's a little bit too much. So again, just my personal opinion. I like the design. It just feels like there's too much going on there. And the last one I also really like, I just feel like there's still too much going on there, and that is Jet Sam GT. But I guess if you were making this like a race car rally variant, then you wouldn't really mind all the crazy designs on there. For me, I personally really like the colors here of like the orangey yellow, white, and the red, and then the little bit of silver mixed in there. But again, that really wasn't the look that I was going for. Now, after that, we can actually change the mirrors on this car. You've got primary carbon, aftermarket, and then some secondary aftermarket and carbon aftermarket choices that you can go for. We then need to take a look at our respray options as well. There is a primary, secondary, and trim color. So primary is going to have an impact on basically the entirety of the car. The secondary color is going to have an impact on anything you chose as secondary. Although on this build, I didn't really choose any of the secondary options, so nothing showed up. And the trim color is literally like the stitching on the seats, the steering wheel, and the dash of the car. So you can make it a fun color if you want. Now after that, we've got a couple of more things to customize, like the roof. There are a few options there. Same with the skirt. A couple of options there that you can use to make it more aggressive if you want. Now what's interesting about this car is it comes with a spoiler by default. And we actually tested this. You cannot remove the spoiler. So this car has to have one, although even though it has a stock spoiler, in order to get that traction bonus, you need to actually choose one of the other spoiler variants. So you have to choose something else if you want to see a traction bonus increased, even though it comes with one by default. It's a little bit weird, but that's the way Rockstar does things. And last but not least, you can choose some vortex generators if you want, and that is it. So now bringing this vehicle outside of the Los Santos Custom Shop, the first thing I tested is could you change those stock rims because they looked awesome. But as you guys can see there, they are chrome. So the answer is no, you cannot, unfortunately. So the stock rims have to remain chrome. Uh, you can also open up all of the doors and the trunks. To no one's surprise, this is a very civilian car. It honestly looks really good in my opinion. And we also wanted to test the headlights on this car. Headlights are awesome. So the normal lights are the ones that you see are kind of like that curve pattern. And the brights are the ones that are a little bit lower. They're sort of like those fog runner lights, but they do actually work. Rockstar did not forget about them. So that's actually quite nice. And then again, you can see the normal brake lights and reverse lights on the vehicle as well. Now, a lot of you guys always say, Mr. Boss, why do you care about the headlights? Well, I care when Rockstar has like additional pairs of headlights that they don't end up using on the vehicles. It just seems like kind of a waste of space. But in this instance, Rockstar did not. They utilized all the headlights and they look really good. So overall, what's my opinion on this car? It's honestly a lot of fun for a four door sports car that can obviously seat three other people, has an insane amount of customization, is not terribly expensive when it's all said and done at you know, $1.285 million and is pretty quick. Now, obviously, is it gonna be competing with things like the Pariah Masakro, of course not. I mean, it's a four-seater car, what'd you expect? But it is still really, really good. It's probably one of the classiest sports cars we have in the game. And I don't know if that just comes from being in the Albany family, which again is based off of Cadillac, or if Rockstar just designed this vehicle that way, but it, it feels really smooth. And I'm a big fan of this car. So I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. What do you think of the Albany VSTR, the new sports car that will be arriving in just a couple of weeks? Hopefully not any longer than that. Are you going to be buying this vehicle? Or are you going to be staying away from it? Or are you going to be waiting until the vehicle comes on a sale or discount? Let me know your thoughts, opinions, and more in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys down there. If you guys did gone to enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new. 
where you want to stay up to date on all the latest GTA and all the Diamond Casino Heist videos that I'm going to be doing here on my channel over the next couple of days and weeks. And be sure to ring that notification bell as well. Sometimes YouTube just doesn't work, and if you ring that bell, you'll automatically be guaranteed to be notified when new videos arrive. But of course, as always, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.